We are back with another podcast in the Abevi podcast. I'm super stoked to have my friend here, my good friend. He is the Alpha Ginger. <laughs> he is the Red Berserker, bro. <laughs> he is one of the most spectacular fighters I know. And I'm really happy to call you my friend. And I'm super stoked to have you here, bro. Thank you, bro. This is a blessing. Thanks for coming here. <laughs> yeah, bro. For me too. Yeah, bro. So you got a fight coming up. You've been doing your camp here. Right. Uh, th I've been talking to Dan lately. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll actually, yeah, today he told me you're super ready, bro, and you're you're doing you've been doing good. You've been doing your hard work, bro, and uh, it's awesome to see for me. So, what's your prediction for the fight, bro? Man, uh, I was praying the other day. I asked God for the first round knockout. So hopefully that will happen. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> if it's in His will, but. Uh, no, I definitely am, I'm coming to finish this fight, um, especially in Japan when you fight over there. They don't like decisions. I've had seven oh. decisions. I've oh, lost really? six of them. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, bro. I, I, need, I need a yeah, finish. Bro, <laughs> so I'm going for the finish. So uh, that's. I that's think that's why for. people love you in Japan because you're going for the finish, bro. You're coming out there, yeah. bro. You're throwing the hands. <laughs> you're throwing what is happening. Whatever, bro. whatever. You have the crazy scrambles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. We train together as well, bro. And it's always like, bro, it's the <laughs> fucking scramble Something party, sick. bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's good to train with you, bro. We've been training a lot in the PGA, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. And um, how how do you like the training with Ben and PGA in general? What, yeah. What can you say about it? So, this will be my second fight with Ben Royal in my corner. Obviously, you mm -hmm. train there. You know how good yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it's the best uh, jiu-jitsu grappling gym in Southeast Asia. I've known Ben for almost, yeah, like six years and solid dude. Um, super stoked for all the gym success. But the mats are crazy, man. You got high-level guys everywhere, like multiple black belts, the biggest open mat. It's, uh, I mean, I'm, you hear this from everyone. It's a place full of studs. So Yeah, bro. It's awesome. Yeah, bro. I think Ben is a wizard, and uh, like what he says is like really like it's super applicable to MMA. Not only like competition jujitsu, because a lot of jujitsu gyms they are only for jujitsu. You know, yep. they're gonna tell tell you, bro, go to your back, go this, go that, and he's like going with the with the progression of MMA nowadays. Yeah. And um, well, he fights MMA. So yeah, he, he fights that. MMA. Yeah, yeah. What it's like. You know, yeah, it's the best. Hundred percent. He knows what it's like. Bro, what is it like for you to fight in Japan? Because it's like it's, it's a dream of so many fighters to d fight in Japan, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's always been my dream was to fight in Japan. I remember being 15, watching watching Pride, be like, "Oh, that's that's what I want to be when I grow up." <laughs> so it's uh, everything I I uh, hope for and and more, bro. Just uh, you know, out of everywhere I fought, it is. You'll see. You're coming to the fight. Yeah, I'm this gonna weekend, come. Yeah, so super stoked. You're gonna see the Ryzen show. Is, it's like unlike any other uh, martial arts experience out there. They really make you as a as a fighter feel respected, loved, and just the whole show. They have an open ceremony, and all the fans are, uh, I think, some of the best in the world. What kind of ceremony is it? Is so, it before the fights? Yeah, before the fights. It kind of sucks as a fighter because they make us like get there early before the fights start, like two hours yeah. early for the opening ceremony. So that's a little annoying. You know, I'd rather stay yeah, at the yeah. hotel and chill all day, but it is what it is. But yeah, the opening ceremony, they have, uh, uh, you know, they may announce everyone we have with all walk out and big fireworks show. It's, it's really cool, man. So yeah, you'll see. Awesome, I can, I can't wait, bro. Yeah. How is it like to fight when all the fighters, uh, all the audience is like super calm? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's how it is in Japan. Yeah. It's, it's nice if you want to hear your corner, man. Like, yeah, you know, oh, I can imagine. Can't hear anything or yeah, <laughs> but uh, mm. yeah, it's it's awesome because you know you can hear you can hear a pin drop. Yeah, sometimes. true. But the fans are they're intelligent, so like if you do a big yeah. move or something, they'll clap yeah, or they'll yeah, cheer, true. and then it goes back to they the go like, oh, yeah, everybody, yeah. and then yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty sick because it's all quiet and you just hear the punches and like you know you can hear your part. Yeah, I don't know, it's it's wild. Yeah, bro, it's nice. But what is the difference, would you say, to fighting in America? Mm -hmm. Because in America, it's like a lot of the just bleed 
uh, audiences yeah. who just want to see blood. Yeah. They're not as uh, educated educated yeah. as uh, yeah, the yeah. Japan fans. Yeah. Um, well, you know my style, so I've never had too many. <laughs> yeah, bro, <laughs> but that's I, true. I've, I've seen fighters that's like true, uh, <laughs> I've seen fighters like make mistakes because they were trying to rush it for the crowd or whatever. You know, especially in the states, fans boo them a lot. But you know, yeah. it's a it's a fight. You can't go out there and uh, at least if you're a technical smart fighter, you're not going to go out there and to a fifty fifty exchange. You're going to make your reads and and wait till you feel like you have your opportunity. And if that's boring to some, they just don't understand the sport. So. Yeah, bro. That's just how it is, bro. Like, yeah. And some and, guys, yeah. Yeah. So it's like also the thing with Western fans is, you know, everyone loves you when you win. You win five fights in a row. Oh, he's the best. He's the mm -hmm. best. You lose one fight. Oh, never mind. He yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas in Japan, win or lose, they respect the warriorship. Yeah, they respect you going in there, which is it's everything, yeah. you know? Yeah, bro. 100%. I want to fight with think, those people. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. 100%. And I think. We should bring that also to the Western fans because it's like, it's too much, too much. Um, they want too much spectacular stuff, yeah. spectacular, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, and they don't think about, uh, yeah, really being smart and being yeah. like, true martial arts is not about having a fucking, having five yeah. spinning heel kick KOs. It's yeah. about, bro, finding the best way to win against this opponent, you know, yeah. and not get hurt. Well, and that's a cultural thing because in Japan, uh, you know, that's where martial arts, a lot of martial arts yeah. started. I think every every student is forced to do, and forced, but, you know, in their education system, they have to do either judo or kendo. Kendo is like the yeah, Japanese yeah. sword fighting. Where you have the, the, yeah. the how we say? The vest or Yeah, whatever. the vest and everything yeah. and the helmet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so they get to experience the martial arts so they know how hard it is you know mm -hmm. what i mean whereas yeah. other people they think oh yeah. i need to do this why yeah. didn't do that you guys don't understand how yeah, like bro. <laughs> far this guy's sitting on their couch yeah. with their chips <laughs> bro i would have knocked this guy out man <laughs> it's not hard <laughs> bro, come on just see red type of dudes yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so i think the they understand in japan what is actually happening when how how hard it is really yeah, well, to fight that's super cool bro yeah Oh, I have a question. What um, you've been? How long have you been fighting, bro? So I had my first amateur MMA fight right when I turned eighteen. I just turned thirty-one. Oh yeah. So wow, thirteen years. Thirteen years, bro. Yeah. yeah. How did how did how did you get into it? Oh man, I was uh, I was in the womb. Happened <laughs> on my mom's belly. I was trying to boxing. fight. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's why she called me Spike. Shadow. I was scrapping from the womb. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so I started uh, karate when I was four years old, actually. Mm -hmm. And I wow. did karate for a couple of years from four to six. And then I played a bunch of other sports. And um, I was always like the rough housing. I was always, you yeah. know, wrestling with my friends. I fouled out of the basketball games, you know, like I would play <laughs> football. Yeah. And so as soon as I had the opportunity to wrestle when I was 12, I wasn't getting much taller. So I was like, all right, maybe basketball, put it on the side, go yeah. and wrestling. <laughs> and fell in love with wrestling and uh, started wrestling when I was 12 and just kept with it. Nice, bro. Yeah. And then like the natural progression was just MMA. Yeah. So like I said, I was wrestling and then I started seeing these fights in Japan. Mm. Uh, I think Pride had just kind of like shut down, but there was like, uh, I think Sengoku and Dream. And so I remember like in high school, like staying up late and watching these <laughs> Japanese fights. And then I found pride. I was just got obsessed with it. And, and then obviously the UFC was getting super popular. I was like, all right, I'm, you know, this is what I want to be. And so that was around like 15. I was 15. like, I want to, I want to do MMA. Who was your favorite fighter in pride? Fedor. Fedor. Yeah. Bro, he still is. The man. Still is my favorite. Yeah. 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 The best. Some people say he's the GOAT, man. He is. Absolutely. He's the GOAT Look outside of UFC, time. definitely. Yeah. I mean, he beat yeah. uh, Tim Sylvia, who was a UFC champion in his prime. He beat yeah. Andre Arlovsky. I th yeah. The other guy that he only didn't beat was Randy Couture, but I'm sure he would have probably whooped on him. Yeah, knows? Randy's a stud too, but Fedor was just on a different level. <laughs> Fedor is different, yeah. He was also ahead of his time. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about um, soccer kicks, bro? Because in Japan you fight soccer kicks, yeah, and uh, it's like a big difference. Or yeah. is it a big difference for you to fight? More? Um, yeah. So in my fights, I haven't had. I've thrown a couple of knees on the ground, which have been fun. 
I didn't need, which actually wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, th- I don't think I got hit too clean, so it wasn't as bad as I wanted to be. I haven't landed a soccer kick yet, though. I'm very, very much looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, bro, you got the opportunity now. <laughs> it's weeks. tough because uh, obviously you can't be soccer kicking your homies and training and yeah, kneeing true. them in the head. I think that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of why. Yeah, and also, I think soccer kicking someone in, like, for example, in the forehead, yeah. bro, your foot is going to blow up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like... It's like big risk, big reward. Yeah, it's the kind of thing, you know. Got it. Got it. If you have a crazy soccer kick knockout, bro, yeah. you're gonna go viral. Oh, it's like sure. it's heavy, bro. Yeah, I was watching uh, highlights of Shogun, Shogun the other day. I'm not sure if you've seen those, but oh my gosh, bro. Oh bro. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just an he's animal like, out there, yeah. bro. I think he That's was like 23, just all juiced up, <laughs> <laughs> jumping, <laughs> jump, stomping yeah, on bro. fools' heads. It was crazy. So yeah. Yeah, hopefully, and then and I'll be able to yeah. do something like that on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, bro, I was, I was, I'm super excited for your fight, bro. Thank you. What's, uh, what do you think about your opponent? Yeah, so I'm fighting uh, Kyung Po Kim. He's a Korean guy. His record's thirteen and three. Um, you know, he's obviously there for a reason. You know, he's not fighting in Ryzen because he's a ha- hasn't been. You know, he's been a slouch. Yeah, but uh, I don't think he brings uh he doesn't bring anything too unique i think i was telling you about this he's more of like a standard mma fighter um so i don't really see like he's not a specialist i don't really think he's gonna do anything i haven't seen a hundred different times you know what i mean yeah so um it's not so much in this fight what i think he's gonna do it's how what i'm gonna do how am i gonna approach this how am i gonna uh, it's kind of, I can fight him where I want. Do I want to strike with him? Do I want to take him down? Do I want to clinch? What kind of fight do I want to dictate? Um, so that's, I think that's that's how that one's going to go. It depends what I would do that night. And I know he can't beat me. The only one who can beat me in there is me. So yeah. as long as I'm staying cool, calm, and don't make any stupid mistakes, it should be yeah, a bro, splendid 100%, 100%. night. 100%. But I know you're probably going to bring the fight to him, oh, bro. <laughs> I always tell myself, oh, yeah, I'll be cool right now. No, yeah, bro. Anything stupid. But I think, you know, <laughs> I think you have this unique um, talent where you bring the fight and you can fucking <laughs> push hard and you have to scrambles and stuff. Yeah. And when you are calm in this scramble and you bring this yeah. pace to him yeah. in the right moment, that's bro, this is so dangerous, bro. Yeah. Because yeah, people yeah. can't handle it, yeah. you know? Yeah, Especially yeah. like a, spa- a guy who is so average, like, yeah. like I don't want to hate on him. Like, he's a good fighter. Yeah. And I see in his fights. Mm-hmm. But he, like you said, he's not bringing anything special to the yeah. table. He's yeah, not yeah. like going to say like, oh, he's going to drown me in his pace or whatever, yeah. bro. But you can bring the pace and you can... You can smash it, bro. Create some I believe in you, bro. Moments. I swear. Yeah, Thank bro. You. 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the fun part about my style is it's yeah. uh, so chaotic. If you, I don't even like, know how I'm yeah. gonna knock him out, but I'll figure a way out, or I'm gonna joke him, or whatever. So, hundred percent. Yeah. So, you've been in starting MMA since fifteen. You said fifteen. When you got into that's when I was like, I wanna. This is my dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where did you start training then? When you so to- I uh, got kicked off the wrestling team. Oh yeah. After my sophomore year of high school, I probably could have got back on. I don't want to real, reveal too much information, but <laughs> I uh, I got kicked off for they said smoking too much weed and getting to too many street fights. So I was a I was a, not a not a good boy growing up. And uh, then I started doing uh, jujitsu mm-hmm. about uh, six months, eight months after I stopped wrestling. You know, I wanted to keep competing, and thank God, like this amazing Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor opened up a gym in a uh, like a three-minute, four-minute walk from my house. I could walk faster than I could drive there oh, wow. type of situation. Super high level. And I would, uh, I was a junior in high school and I would, I'd cut class early to go train at noon and then I'd go to the evening class. So I'd be, you know, I was just going to the gym or going doing jiu-jitsu twice a week, five days a week. And uh, the instructor then he had such an amazing um, teaching style. He would teach us like one or two moves a week, right? And that's all we do mm-hmm. for the whole thing. So it, within six months, I would do, you know, we would learn the same sequence, same moves, blah, blah, blah. I do it 
So if I go 10 times a week, I get 10 yeah, sessions yeah. working on just that move. Yeah, yeah, And I just, my right. level jumped yeah. so high. And I was smart too, because I was like, I already know how to wrestle. I'm going to train off my back. You know, so, mm -hmm. so I would, yeah. I primarily, all I did was, you know, play off my back because I knew I could always gum on top or mm -hmm. I also was like, yeah, anyway. So um, I would just feel like I was very blessed to have such high level training at a young age where I was all in and showing up every day yeah and super focused not like yeah. one day do we do kimura one day we yeah. do leg locks one week yeah. we do arm bars i got really good at like the face structured yeah 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 Yeah, and i see in your training as well like a lot of times when you say when you train you say like you want to be well-rounded like you said for example last time you said oh i i want to do more submission escapes or i want to do this i want to do this and yeah. you know you uh you're good at knowing what you need yeah i think so. that's part of uh you know it's art of war <laughs> yeah bro <laughs> no know thy enemy know thyself victory certain 100 times and uh Thanks. thankfully i do have a, i've been blessed with amazing coaches and i do have people who keep it real with me you know if i'm slacking in an area or they say hey you know you look good here but you could improve work there uh i'm i'm not shy to it i'm gonna go and try to learn or put myself in a crappy position and and get better uh yeah, bro. Also, with my background, I've competed in like, you know, six or seven different martial arts growing up. So I'm not like the best judo guy. I'm not the best wrestler. I'm not the best boxer. I'm not the best at any of these, but I understand them. I know what yeah. works. And from there, that's where you can create the beautiful thing that's MMA. You know? Yeah. So because I think also nobody going to get nobody going to be perfect in every martial arts in MMA there's not enough time it's not it's not enough time and yeah. even even nobody's going to be perfect in only kickboxing or yeah. only jiu jitsu you yeah. know there's people they have more knees more boxing more yeah. this and that and in MMA you just have so many martial arts so many techniques and that makes it so beautiful but that makes it also a challenge to put priorities on the yeah. same on the right yeah area and yeah, that's the part of part of training smart, right? Well, and it's that's what's cool about it. It gives us the ability to be creative, you know. Yeah, what I mean? like yeah, bro. 100%. With with you know five, six, seven different martial arts, you're learning. You're gonna find out this move from here, this move from here, this move here, and those are the moves you're really good at. And you can figure out a way to hit the combo to go to all three of them. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's that's what's really cool, uh, bro. You know, a couple of fighters who are really good at this. Well, I think one of the best in the world, Demetrius Johnson. Mm. He's so good at Just chaining jump. everything together. Yeah. Uh, TJ Dillashaw is another one where maybe he's not the best pure wrestler, maybe he's not the best pure boxer or kickboxer, but he's so good at using everything together and yeah. flowing it together. So that's yeah. I think that's the highest level of MMA when you 100%. can use everything. Yeah, hundred percent. On and in the right areas, right? Yeah. Nobody's gonna be the yeah. How I said before. Yeah. So you jumped from wrestling to jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You said six months, about yeah. six months. Mm -hmm. What was the next martial arts? Uh, boxing and, and Muay Thai. Okay. Uh, yeah. How did that go? You you just switched to boxing and Muay Thai or you did both together? Yeah. So uh, I started jujitsu um, and I was like, you know, I was telling my coach, hey, I want to do MMA. And I was training in my garage with my buddies. So, <laughs> and so like, uh, so like I said, as soon as I turned 18, the week after I was still in high school, I had my first MMA fight. And bro, oh my gosh, I, I uh, this is a funny story. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so like, uh, you know, I've had like a hundred plus grappling matches. Oh wow! A lot of yeah, yeah, and wrestling fights. as well. Yeah, and then I've yeah, had yeah. like like a bunch of street fights. And like I said, I was this yeah, cocky, like crazy, arrogant, yeah. arrogant. Yeah, I was. And I thought, oh, this MMA is going to be nothing. Like, <laughs> And so they put me up against some, like, 30-year-old. I think he was only, like, two and two. But, you know, it was my debut. I was 18. So, anyways, I'm, I'm kind of all cocky. And we get to the fight. And everything's cool. And then as soon as we get in the cage, bro, the doors close. The lights go on. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, a deer in the headlights. And I was like, you know, like I got really, you know, freaked out, got nervous. And, uh. I ended up winning the fight, but I didn't really start fighting until he head kicked me. Once he head kicked oh, me, I'm like, oh, shit, all right, we're fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just funny because, like I said, I was so cocky and like, oh, I got this. And I've had, I have tons of experience, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's totally different. It's unlike anything else, you know? Yeah. Bro. You're in the cage, like, and all the lights are on yeah. you and people's everywhere. So it's the craziest experience. I think 
not everybody's made for fighting, but I think it's a good experience for everybody to go toe to toe with somebody and fucking fight somebody and know like there's real resistance there and yeah. this other guy wants to kill me as much <laughs> as I want to kill him, <laughs> yeah. you know? And yeah. that's that's what these people that is just say just bleed and they think uh, they're casuals, they don't realize that, yeah. you know? They don't realize it. Yeah, it's tough because you see both perspectives. Like we want to make this martial arts like, oh, it's this beautiful, like sacred, pristine thing. But at the end of the day, it is a fight. It's you know what I mean? Well, it's so war, there, you know? that's like uh, yeah. I, I think GSP says it, and I love it. There's there's three types of uh, fighters. people who do MMA. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, or, you got the or, fighter type, which are like you know the just bleed type. You got the <laughs> martial arts type, who are you know about the martial arts, and then you have athletes. Those are like kind of the three. Yeah. And so ideally, we want to be all three. You know what yeah. I mean? We want to have the good technique, obviously great athletic abilities, and then you got to have that heart, mm -hmm. that fighting heart. So yeah important where would you put yourself in the in those categories because i think a lot of people are dominant in one of them yeah you know i would also think yeah. i'm dominant in one of them yeah but what would how would you say uh man i try to strive for all three right yeah. you know what i mean i try to do all three i know i i have a big heart i know i'm athletic i've always done good at athletes 100%. and the martial arts that's probably the one that i have to keep I, and that's why I've had inconsistencies throughout my career. When I've gotten off the martial arts path, the the yeah, what I believe yeah. is the narrow path. I believe, you know, yeah, you yeah. know me. I'm a big Jesus freak. So when I've yeah. gone off that path of staying disciplined, that's when I've had my losses in my career or in my life. So uh, I know I can fight. I know I'm an athlete. But every day I want to keep working on the martial arts aspect. And yeah, hundred percent. I think that's like, that's the hard one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess it'd yeah. be harder and if you weren't a fighter. To the fighter. Yeah. yeah, that's part of the martial like, arts. It's just when you wake up in the morning, yep. you go train, you yep. eat, you sleep again, yep. you go train yep. again, and you have your focus, you chill with fighters, you like, yep. uh, everything you do is related to fighting, right? Yep. Like it's, uh, that's the martial arts way. Like not everybody. I think martial arts is uh, like a broad broad spectrum or like a broad area yeah but if we are professional fighters and we do this for a living i think um we need to take it super serious and i think uh well i mean important. it's uh it's one of those things where i think you have to be obsessed if you want to be one of the best in the world this like yeah you have to really you know live breathe yeah, yeah. eat sleep it and this is not like it, another sport where it's it's casual or, you know, you can make a mistake or you have a game every other week. So it's okay <laughs> if you lose a game. Like we fight maybe three or four times a year. Our bodies, our life's on the line and everything we do in the, like, there is no off season. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Like, it's yeah. not like we get games for this period and then, oh, you get three months, six months yeah, off. We're always. And then you go back into training. Yeah. And yeah. No, no, no. And that's what separates the guys is who can stay focused, who can stay disciplined, who can stay consistent time and time yeah, yeah. and lasts the longest i think chel sonan says that which i love it's it's not always who's the best in the world it's who lasted the longest yeah bro who never gives up right yeah because you have so you have some people who he could be uh the best in the world like you know what i mean he can beat everybody up but styles make fights and there's one guy who's around at that time who just has his number yeah and he'll never be the best till that guy retires or yeah, quits or whatever so and sometimes it's not your time you know yeah even yeah. though you would be in like every other area yeah er uh, or era you would be the champion yeah. but that time just fucking khabib was there bro <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean yeah. <laughs> bro, that, yeah, it's, it's not your time you know wild, bro. you never know yeah you yeah. never know so yeah how did you win your first fight Decision. Decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was only three two-minute rounds, so oh, okay. it, you know there's not much time to to do anything, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, you don't have uh, any uh, amateur fights. Fourteen. Fourteen yeah. fights. Amateur MMA fights. Ah, okay. So that was a amateur fight. Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't turn pro till I was 24. Mm, so okay, my time. Yeah, that's important. I think it's um, you shouldn't rush this. You know. Like as soon as like I also have fourteen MMA fights I think, mm -hmm. and I was always scared to go pro because it's like super scary first of all and uh, you want to have we want to have experience right yeah when you're in there you want to be there you want to be you want to know where you are and know where it is mm 
mm-hmm. and then you can't fuck up anymore. Yeah. Right? When you're pro, you you need to win everyone. Your record so, matters. Yeah, your record matters. Yeah. No, nobody's gonna ask about the what's amateur, your yeah, amateur right, amateur right, twenty years enough. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just amateur. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big thing. That's why I waited before I went professional. I wanted when I went professional, I wanted to be like okay, I have a chance against the best in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like I can compete in all these facets of MMA with pretty much anyone, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you you definitely have to have that confidence because you go pro too soon, man, all it takes is one bad fight to change everything in someone's mm-hmm. life. You know, they could have all the momentum, all the trajectory, they'd be one in the Western world. They go through a horrible injury, a horrible knockout, and yeah. now you set them back three or four years, you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not an easy life, bro. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't recommend it <laughs> You know, for all those young and, high school and, guys and, that want to be fighters. Bro, don't do it. <laughs> bro, I I just say, bro, you know, I think, bro, you were also like a rough kid and stuff. And I think it gave you so much that it made you, it made you calmer. I think it made you, it gave you a path. It gave you something to chase. Yep. And for me as well, I would say I was like, I was a loser before martial arts, you know? Mm-hmm. And it gave me so much um, fighting. But also I say, bro, if you do it, bro, you need to be so sure to do it, yep. bro. Because it's not something you can just do casually like, no. oh, I'm going to try try to do ice skating, bro. Yep. It's not ice skating, bro. <laughs> You're going to get fucking punched in the face. Yeah. And... Uh, at the end of the day, you could be it could be the worst 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 possible outcome. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So if you want to do it, like just be sure to do it. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, and that's the thing you don't really know till you try it out, right? So yeah, <laughs> you gotta yeah, see if yeah. you like getting punched in the face. Should, I think everybody should, everybody should train. Yeah, you know, absolutely. it's sure. like it's super fun. You know, yeah. like I love training, bro. Yeah, it's, no, I'm. I think martial arts are some of the yeah. best things you could do for. Uh, your children or other yeah. people, man. Hundred percent. One of the best ways yeah. of life. But fighting is different, bro. Right? Yeah. Well, and this is where I've always had a bit of contention. I've talked to my old senseis about this. It's like when you involve money into the martial arts, mm-hmm. it's no longer the martial arts, right? It's now prize fighting. This yeah. Is, this is True. different, and it's this like- is where you're gonna get shady decisions you're going to get people doing steroids you're going to get all this you know backhand deals you're going to get yeah. some you know it's like ooh, the list goes on you know how shady the sport can be yeah, yeah. so it takes away from the pureness of the martial arts when you have have prize fighting you know yeah that's true yeah but the, at the same time you don't want to like i feel like you don't want to sacrifice your whole life you're so much like so much time so much health we give for the sport yeah. and not get something out of it yeah right yeah so yeah. it's like if i if i would do my career without being able to support myself from it mm-hmm. it would be like I, I couldn't i couldn't do it yeah you know? i couldn't do it the same as it was i was this now so yeah there's always a good and a bad right to both yeah of them. course like yeah we're fighting a lot of people are fighting to feed their families but yeah so it's the only, with, only yeah, thing bro. they have so yeah yeah Let's get back to your story. Um, so you did your first fight, mm-hmm. and you were box. You were not training MMA yet. You were just mm-hmm. boxing yeah. Muay Thai. And, uh, uh, yeah, jiu-jitsu. I was training in my garage with some some homies. I had <laughs> some mats and we're training out of my mom's garage. And cool. it was so funny. My my first few fights were all training in my garage, and then after that, my jiu jitsu instructor was like, "Hey, you need to go here get an actual MMA instructor and." I uh, started doing MMA at the arena in San Diego and ha- got a legit MMA coach. And I was, uh, you know, kept kept progressing from there. How long did you train there, over there? Um, I think about a year. And then um, that's when I found Jesus and a lot of things, things changed after that. But I was at, I was at the uh, uh, arena gym for about a year. You see? Okay. Pardon me. Cool. So, and after that? Took a year and a half off the martial arts. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a round. Full, uh, full yeah, break. Yeah. No yeah. training for one and a half years. No training. I uh, 
I would would uh, all I did in that year and a half was drink beer, do pull ups, and play tennis. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's so random, bro. It's, just, it's also not related yeah. to each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm all or nothing. So, uh, but yeah, no, I, I had a uh, I started studying the Bible, um, and for a while there, I had a hard time punching someone in the face and telling mm-hmm. them Jesus loves you. Yeah, but uh, God, and also I think part of it was my identity was so much wrapped up in this tool bag MMA fighter that God had to kind of take that away from me mm-hmm. for a little bit to, so I could rely on him. And cause like I said, if you're whole, you know, my whole identity was based on your fighter tough guy. Yeah, exactly. And so he stripped that from me. Thankfully, thank God he gave it back. And when he gave it back, I said, if I'm going to do this again, you know, I want to do it to, to glorify you and, mm-hmm. and bring honor to your name. So now I have the right mentality when I compete and uh, I can completely, you know, I, I'm more mature in my walk. I understand I'm not, it's not just, I'm not fighting out of hatred or malice or just because I want to hurt this person. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's a lot, mm-hmm. a lot deeper than that. Yeah. So you do want to glorify God in the way. Yeah. I feel like this is uh, my, my ministry. This is my platform. This is my foundation. I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you if I yeah, didn't. Wrong if I, you know, went a different way in my life. Yeah. So. And I can feel your energy is like super calm and like, like super, how can I say? It's like a... Peaceful? Yeah. Yeah. Peaceful, you know, and you can, uh, yeah, you can see that uh, like God did a lot in your life and yeah. a, lot of in, uh, a lot of good for you. Well, like I was telling you, man, Growing up, it was uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy for my parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I was a, I was a, I was a punk, and so God changed my heart, changed my life. He's changed everything, and He's still, mm. still changing it. And like I said, in my career, you can see, like uh, the moments when I'm walking with God, I'm doing these amazing things. The moments I fall off that path, you know, I get off the narrow path. I get off the the discipline, the martial arts way start taking L's you start and yeah, start going yeah. through it you know what I mean so yeah it's, yeah. it's a, just how it is yeah yeah it's, you learn every time right of course yeah you learn more from from humbling experiences from losses than yeah than victories yeah true I think also like a lot of times you learn it like so many lessons you need to learn them from first person experience yeah like Like a lot of times, like you you can say, oh, stay calm. Like people can tell you, oh, stay calm, stay calm, or yeah. do this. Yeah. But uh, normally, bro, you need to fall off and you need to fuck it up first. <laughs> and the pain of the yeah. of the loss is gonna tell you, yeah. bro. Okay, I need to change this, you yeah. know. And uh, well, yeah, because we're hard-headed men. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> a lot of times. A lot of times we're stubborn, man. We uh, we don't learn. You know, you could tell, give us the wisest advice. You know, you lead a horse to water, but they have to drink it. You know, I've had amazing mentors and people tell me I'll oh, do this, do that. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And, you know, <laughs> till I till I blow it up myself. I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, bro. All right, bro. I'm super stoked for your fight, cool. man. Thank you, Maurice. I think uh, I will be there. I will be there in Japan. Sweet. Um, supporting you. And uh, yeah, bro. It was awesome to have you in the uh, in the podcast. Thank you. And uh, whatever you want to say to the camera, c- you can say it now. Whatever you want to support. Yeah. Uh, it's your time. Cool. Uh, tune in next. Uh, I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but uh, tune in my fight June 9th against Kyung Po Kim, Ryzen 47. Shout out to Witness the Rise, Marisa Bevy. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Bless you, too, bro. Uh, we're coming up. <laughs> One yeah, FC bro. Rise. Yeah, I'm here, bro. We're Asia. We're making we're making waves in Asia. Yeah, so man. Stay tuned. We are. <laughs> we'll see.